talking about pop music. I'm trying to think, like, yeah, um, this is, uh, uh, it's a chapter 12 of a calculus book. So if you ever, if you never made it to, to chapter 12 of your calculus book, um, depending on what book you're using, you know, your standard, I guess something like Anton Calculus. This is Salas Hill Calculus, a very common college uh, textbook. Uh, we're kind of looking at material from chapter 12, and um, uh, we're going to develop vector calculus, right? So, uh, and I think you can dive right in uh, because uh, I'm an easygoing kind of guy. Well, <laughs> All right, so I guess I'd like to convey uh, some of, of my practices, like, uh, well, let's see if my pen will even write. All right. I'm ambivalent about how, this is going to be my uh, whatchamajiggy of the thing, no, in this case, I'm going to make this the X axis. All right. Call that the X. And see it's coming out of the page. And then I'm going to go here to the side. Uh, with my... Uh, and do I need to... You know, I sort of want to have a lot of space. Make the most of this whole space. So why don't I just go all the way. Let's see. So, this is my uh, y-axis, right? So, I don't particularly uh, do it this way. And I think, you know, the way this book is, that this is positive x, which I would not do it this way. But it's good to start thinking about your space uh, being rotated around, you know. You want to develop vector calculus, uh, you can go on to things like tensor calculus, which is uh, where you have a more very a generalized definition of vectors that can relate different physical reference frames, right? And so it's a little known fact that um, like uh, Einstein's field equations, he couldn't do the tensors. Uh, that's my understanding that the real hard math or whatever, the tensor uh, uh, generalized vector for, for reference frames and stuff like that was actually solved by somebody else. That Einstein said, well, we would need something like this, right? Because we're going to have vectors and forces in different contexts because space is like bending around and stuff. And, uh, and things are different depending on your reference frame, your speed and direction, right? The physics is different. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just following like along with the Salas and Hill textbook and I'm trying to make the most of, of this space. I go all the way up here. And I call this the Z axis, right? So we have, instead of just the X, Y plane, right? Uh, we have the X, Y, Z 3D space. You see how it's supposed to be like X is going to go on this way, sort of, sort of like that. Now, uh, what we have done uh, up, up to now, how should I put it, um, is we would deal with a right triangle a lot in the, in the plane. So I'm going to make a big ass. There's uh, one leg of it. And see how I'm deftly uh, doing this. Right? Because this right, is a 90 degree angle. Because you see it's, it's laying down flat. So we would have, we would have triangles like this. 
And I told myself I was going to get uh, a ruler. But then I didn't get one. I actually, actually, I had uh, the last school I was working at. So I used a toothpick box. I got a, a broken tooth here. And incidentally, you know, if... Uh, uh, yeah, root canals are bad. My wife taught me that uh, if you got a, a broken tooth or whatever, instead of getting a root canal, just rinse with, uh, you know, brush and clean your mouth well and rinse your, uh, um, your your tooth there with hydrogen peroxide and it'll stop hurting. And it did. My toothache went away. And I've had this tooth for years with no root, root canal. But I do need toothpicks because it's broken. And it, there's, a, there's a piece of walnut in it, right? Is that gross? Sorry. Somehow it adds to it, though, don't you think? Oh, wait a second. This should be, this triangle should really hit on this line. So I, I, I don't like what I've done here. I want to get more on this spot. See that I ruin it, sort of. But that that's more like a right triangle lying uh, down in the plane, right? And... We, we would do this thing of uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm going to put that over here just as a reference. So this side and this side, the, the sides that are adjacent respectively to the right angle are A squared and B squared, the lengths of them. And that's going to be equivalent to the length of the hypotenuse. And this is known... There's, there's different, and I was talking about this yesterday. You can do a geometric proof of this. I did one yesterday, actually, if you tuned in. Uh, simple uh, geometric proof with a, a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. There's some interesting uh, paper folding uh, uh, proofs. of it. But anyway, the Pythagorean theorem, you can, you can prove it just with some cubes or whatever by laying them down on the ground and, and looking at it. You can see that this is true, generally, this a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it's actually true uh, in three dimensions as well. So we're, what we're kind of trying to get, we're trying to get away from this and into the level of a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared, right? So we're going to add another dimension to it. Now, um, what am I, okay, so I'm going to go and trying to I'm trying to project uh, my uh, uh, triangle here into a three-dimensional space developing and, and the reason I'm, uh, I'm this is just a way that uh, really I'm drawing a picture that's in the book hold on a second let me show you no secrets here. Oh, no, that didn't work. Why did that do that? Oh, is somebody coming? Let's see. Um, yeah. Stay in the call. No, nobody. Yeah. I had like nine people that were saying they wanted to do this math club thing, and that's one of the reasons why I'm here. So I, I, uh, uh, I've set up a Google Meet, and it's, it's kind of running. But I don't know, the time, the time is maybe, I don't know if the time is working or not uh, for these people. Let's see. Uh, so. So I try to do this uh, projection of the, oh, of the, uh, whatchamajig of the thing. I try to do this projection into the three-dimensional space. Um, right. Now, what I'd like to do is this. Now watch this. I'm going to go straight up here.
this is going to be my right angle here. And this, this one is going to get me projected up into, uh, oh, it's too short. Hold on. I'm not, I'm not going to mess this up here. I'm going to do it right. Uh, so I'm getting another triangle, and what this this represents is the the following. We had before we're in the plane, right? Let me color this in a little bit so it doesn't annoy me. But, yeah. All right. And then we go up into the the space here. So now. Uh, I, I projected my uh, my triangle in the plane up into the space, and now I'm gonna uh, uh, oh, and that wait wait a minute wait a minute wait. this is uh, I need to go back to what I was doing before this little beep thing started beeping me. Hello hello, okay. I'm looking, I'm examining it. Right. So, I've got a point here on this triangle that's in space, and a point here. And, and you know, what What I'm, I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to get a mathematical structure for coping with a distance in three-dimensional space, right? So I'm gonna uh, label uh, this one uh, P. And this one I'm gonna label uh, Q. And this one here I'm going to label R. Now these are the ones that we kind of already dealt with, right? But this P, so I've got a PQR for this triangle here. That's a typical geometry type thing. But here, here I'm going to call this point one in three space, and I'll call this one point two in three space. Taking a look to see how that's working out. That's a nice little drawing, you know. You need to do it, you know, you, you get rusty or whatever like that. So, uh, uh, now, this first point, P1, has some, co the, the, the reason why everything, nothing is la labeled with a number, right, is because you want to keep everything completely general, right, so you can plug in any kind of numbers and, and, and it's going to work. All right, so um, this is my, my first point. Well, what does it consist of? Well, it consists of uh, I'm moving the uh, I'm moving the x direction some distance. I'm moving the y direction some distance, and then I move into the z direction some distance, right? And that's how I get here. Um, like uh, 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 let, let's see if I if I went from uh, to, to, I don't want to. It's going to clutter up the drawing because I'm getting ready to put more stuff in here. But anyway, there's some first x coordinate x sub one, and there's some first uh, y coordinate y sub one, and some first uh, z coordinate z sub one. All right. All right, and then of q. Uh, the uh, let, let's do it like this. Let's see. If um, to get what Q is, right, I need to take a note of, of the triangle that I have started out with in the plane down here. Now it has some point right here, which is the first x point, but it's in. The z equals zero plane. In other words, the x, y 
plane is the plane z equals zero. That's the formula for the plane, right? So naturally, to write it in three-dimensional jargon, we're going to say x1, comma, y1, comma, zero. Ta-da! And this one here, Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 it's going to be uh, x1, y2, um, 0. Well, I, actually, like, we, we go from, here's my, here's my first x point, uh, x, y coordinate, and here's my second x, y coordinate. Th this will be easier to understand what I'm doing if I do it this way, in this sequence, right? Because normally I would find this, the length of the hypotenuse in the plane. Right? I would find this by going a squared plus b squared equals to c squared, and that would be what that is, right? But in the plane, this is going to be um, x2, y2, z2, or x2, y2, 0, excuse me. Ooh, I hate I'm crowding myself in there. I, so, that's my second point. Now, if, if I look, if, if I'm moving, if I'm, I've moved to here along the y-axis, right? That, that means I've got, uh, whatchamacha, I've got x1, comma y2 see the y2s line up this way the y2s uh, all right So, if I raise up to the Z1 plane, the Z sub 1 plane, whatever that is, I'm going to use this X1, Y2, Z1. And part of the reason why, you know, I like to work this way is because, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I look at a drawing in a book like this, it sort of just looks like gobbledygook. But then when I start writing it down, I write it down a bunch of times, all of a sudden it become, becomes, I start to read it the way I read a text, like I read an English text. I can see uh, th things about it. So, uh, as you can see here, I've got X2, Y2, and 0. So if I move that to the Z1 plane, that's going to give me the R. Uh, uh, I'll have X2, comma, Y2, comma, Z2. Uh, no, Z1. Excuse me, I said raise to the Z1 plane. Z1. Uh, and then whatever uh, this distance, the change is going to bring me to Z2. So that's going to be P sub 2, X2, Y2, Z2. Oh! Now I'm look I'm looking I'm thinking where I'm going to write this out. 
uh, with Q and R as in the figure P1, P2, R P1, P2, R and P1 R, Q are both right triangles they're both right triangles right so <clears throat> the distance between P1 and P2 could be written like this let's see where I can put this here D of P sub 1 comma P sub 2 so I'm talking the distance, right? And by the Pythagorean theorem, theorem I'm going to do this. Squared is equal to, let's look at this. P1 to R. You see, P1 to R squared and R to P2 squared. So to get the legs of this triangle, right, I'm going to go, let me put some square brackets here. D. P1, comma, R. Squared. Plus. D R to P2, right? Right, so that's just the Pythagorean theorem taking these, this leg and this leg, this squared plus this squared is equal to this squared. All right. <clears throat> now, let me see if I can fit this in. Uh, the distance uh, from P1 to R, this hypotenuse, right? So let's put this down. The distance from P1 uh, to R, which is this guy right here. Is equal to, and I'm gonna kind of go around the corner here. Uh, uh, the distance of uh, Q to R squared plus, I'm going to go around the corner here, uh, the distance from P1 to Q squared. I'm checking my time here. What we're going to do, I want to fit this all on the one 
page. So I'm, I'm going to leave this up here for a second for you to take it all in for a minute. Uh, I, let, let's just go over it verbally, and then I'm going to shift the page up, and we're going to we're going to continue to work. So the, what I'm interested in is a general formula for this uh, in three dimensional space. Uh, the distance between a, a general point and three-dimensional Cartesian space from here to here. So I know by the formation of this right triangle that dP1 to P2 right, is equal to, uh, a squared rather, is equal to uh, the square of the distance from P1 um, uh, to R squared plus the distance from R to P2 squared. Pythagorean theorem. That's simple. It's a right triangle. All right. And the distance from P uh, to R is going to be the hypotenuse squared. It's going to be the hypotenuse of the projection of the, the triangle from the plane. Right. It's going to be uh, 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 P1 to R is going to be equal to uh, the distance uh, from P2 from from Q to R squared plus the distance from P1 to Q squared. Let's think about that for a minute. All right. Have you thought about it enough? Because I'm getting ready to uh, move this up. See if we can get some more space going here. <laughs> so we're going to take those equations, and you should have really, uh, folks. I, I recommend when you're doing this, you should write down everything the teacher writes down. You know, you just should, because uh, it's going to it's going to start getting into your head more. Uh, when you go through the process of that. Corrections here. Okay, so the distance from P1 to P2 squared is equal to, I'm going to bracket this as well, sorry, should be doing that. The distance from Q to R squared, bracket distance Q plus the distance from P1 to Q squared plus uh, the distance from R to P2 squared. So we get that by combining the two previous equations. All right, so let's look at what is the distance 
uh, from from Q uh, to to R. Well, to get that, I'm at x2 here, so I have x2 minus x1. x2 minus x2. y2 minus y2. And z1 minus z1. So these components all go to 0 right and I'm left with x2 minus x1 squared all right let's look at the distance from P to Q x1 minus x1 is 0 y2 minus y1 is y2 minus y1 And z1 minus z1 is 0, and I'm left with y2 minus y1 squared. And then the last one is what? It's the distance from uh, r to p2. Well, I've got x2 minus x2 is 0, y2 minus y2 uh, is 0, and z2 minus z1 is what I'm left with. Is equal to is equal to this, right? So, if we take the square roots of both sides, we're gonna get <coughs> the distance. Let me see if I'm still on the page. Yeah, I am. From P1 to P2. Um, is equal to the square root So now we have a, 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 a derivation, derivationalism. We derived a distance formula for two points in Cartesian three-dimensional space. Ta-da! Now, uh, I would like to uh, uh, go on uh, m more, but I, I think it's about it's well, I'm, I'm debating. Uh, if I should go forward or not. Let's see what we got again. Let's do a quick review. The distance from P1 to P2 squared is equal the distance uh, uh, p to r squared uh, plus the distance uh, r to p2 squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then my second uh, uh, distance the distance from P1 to R, 
All right. This is the same uh, uh, thing that we have. This this is 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 equal to uh, the distance from Q to R squared plus the distance from P1 to Q squared. Alright, you with me on that? You follow that? Okay, so let's let's go down here and, and, and try that again. So I'm looking for well, let me see if I can get this on the page. I have the distance uh, P1 to P2. is equal to and I'm gonna see if I can if I can do this right the first thing that I've got is the distance from P1 to R squared up here you see that All right but that's the hypotenuse that's the same one so what I want to do is I want to take this and combine these two equations so instead of writing this first component I'm going to write the second uh, equation here because I'm looking at, at the distance P1 to R is equal to what? The distance uh, 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 from Q to R squared plus The, diff the distance from P1 to Q squared plus the distance from R to P2 squared. Oh, and I, I forgot I forgot to put my square here on the beginning. Somebody should have told me. They should have told me. All right. So you can say this and this. All right, that's what we did. This and this. Right. This and this. And then we get this result. Now, um, I, I don't know about you, but it, it really it really helps me uh, to go ahead and uh, you know when I'm getting this language or whatever in my mind where I, I can think about it uh, and communicate with it or whatever, I need to go through the process of putting it down on the page to be more more effective right now. So that's the purpose of, of going through this. And thanks for tuning in. That'll be the end of our class for today. And what, what we have done, what, what are we even doing? Does anybody remember? Right. We had the Pythagorean theorem for two-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. That's what we started out with. Right. 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we have shown that this would also, it could be extended to three dimensions by the preceding methodological, pedagogical methodology, right? And so uh, that's what we have done, is we've got a distance formula right here. The distance from point one to point two, where point one and point two are vectors in three-dimensional space, ordered triples of numbers, right? The distance between those two points by the Pythagorean theorem is, is this formula, the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1, uh, y1 squared uh, plus z2 minus z1 squared. And that, I, I mean, uh, for me, I still can kind of uh, just write down the distance formula. I, I still, in my mind, I, I sort of see for some reason that uh, it extends, so so uh, an extended version of the Pythagorean theorem uh, that's shown by this would be that a squared plus b squared combining two right triangles plus c squared is then equal to d squared, the distance between two points in three-dimensional space. All right. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.